Want to get into FPV drone racing after a cheap drone that's still performance packed? Well, stay tuned because uh, this thing might hold some promise. G'day, Stu here from UOB Futures and today, well, you know what's kind of crazy is uh, just how cheap FPV drones are getting. I mean, these bite and flies, not only are they built for you, they're coming in at super cheap prices and it also looks like they're packed with some pretty good stuff. I know when I first got flying my original drone, it was like the, the Nighthawk or something like that. That was like four or five hundred US dollars and it came nowhere near with the components that are on today's drone. So I mean, for like 150, 200 bucks, you can get some really serious quads nowadays, which is awesome because I understand a lot of people don't have money, but they still want to get a good quad that can go out, rip it around, and have a great FPV racing experience with. So, what we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be sticking the X215, the Fury B, on the bench, breaking it down, having a look at its pros and cons, the components it comes with, and then a part in a part two video, we'll take it out, rip it around, and show you guys some flight footage. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Let's stick this little bad boy on the bench and get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench, and I mean, I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen just have a bit of a look at it it definitely is a very very unique looking quad it does look very much like the d quad obsession and also the lx leopards i've got the lx leopard here as well and you can see that aluminium frame across the top it definitely has a bit of a unique style to it so uh look i'm going to also link the d quad and the uh, leopard down below as well because if this one is a copy this one definitely wasn't first so whichever one you think definitely go and check those frames out as well but Let's get on with it because uh, this thing, it's designed to spin 5 inch props, it's a 5 inch racer and it's a very very compact. When you look at everything in the middle, I think it's going to fly pretty well. So the first thing we're going to do, let's stick it on the scales, take your bets, how much you think it's going to weigh. It's coming in at 340 grams. So look, it's not a heavy racer, but it's also not the lightest racer either. So it's sort of in between, and I think it's a pretty good weight, especially, you know, when you combine its price, its performance, I think it's gonna go pretty well. Now you do have some pretty cool stuff in here. I really like the flight controller. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start at the outside end. I'm gonna take the props off because they're definitely getting in the way. But we'll start at the outside end and then we'll have a look at all its components. Alrighty, so the props are off and uh, that's feeling a bit better. I'm not gonna stab myself on them anymore, but these are sort of the tri-blade fishbone version and they're 50 48 so you get a whole few sets of those which is nice thing you get three so we're going to put those to the side and now we can actually have a look at the components on the quad itself so starting at the outside in this is where it's not really labeled i guess if we look at the frame you know it's a five inch racer it's 250 mil 215 millimeters from motor to motor and i just want you to have a look at the carbon that's pretty weird stuff. I've seen a lot of carbon in my days and I've never actually seen a quad that looks like this. Now uh, in terms of the flex, usually when carbon looks different it's definitely not as strong. They're trying to pull some sort of shifty but given this thing a flex I know it's very hard to tell but it's not really flexing that much. I want to put a bit of a comparison on the screen. I'm going to show you this one. So this one right here, this is the F200 and uh, this one Look at that flex. That one, this one has way more flex in it versus the Fury B215. So this one feels much sturdier, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure what sort of carbon that is because I've never seen anything that looks quite like that. Alrighty, so on the outside we have these motors right here. They are protected, I should mention, by this little part on the frame. So is that a bit of motor protection or is that about looks like it might protect it in a front crash? But can you imagine that thing crashing into something? I think it would definitely cause some damage. But the motors themselves, they're 2206 motors, 2600 kV. I think that's really a good size motor to spin some 5 inch props. So the high kV means it should have a ton of thrust. But are these motors powerhouses? I'm not sure yet because look, the design sound good. You know, I real, I'm very familiar with motors of this size and this KV, but Fury B, Fury B has been a bit hit and miss. So the motors might be a little bit lat luster or they could be performance monsters. I can't wait to take it out and rip it around because uh, I think that's what could really make or break this build. Now moving towards the middle, you notice there's no ESCs on the arm and that's because inside here, we've got our four in one ESC. Now the ESC itself, it's a 30 amp ESC. So we should have plenty of power to rip this thing around. It's rocking D shot. So B or hell yes, rocking D shot, which is, you know, pretty much standard nowadays, but great to see it's in here. Moving upwards, we have some Something that is actually pretty special. So we have the Hollybro F4 flight controller. So yep, for 150 bucks or 160 bucks, whatever this thing is, the components in here are starting to look pretty good. Now the Hollybro flight controller, it has like a little floating gyro. I'll see if, see if I can flash a picture on the screen, but that means we shouldn't be getting any oscillation. So it's sort of soft mounted in there and that's going to result in some really solid gyro performance. And then on the top, 
another sort of one of the stars of the show, we've got our little VTX. So traditionally, in the past, you know, you've had big VTXs that are sort of this strange bulky size. It's cool to finally start them seeing coming in these little stacks. So you can screw them down and you can see it makes for really solid little build. Now keeping on the FPV side of things, connected to that VTX, we've got a, it's running off a little peak tail. In the back right here, you've got a little Pagoda antenna and Look, there's been a bit of a rave. A lot of people, a lot of people like pagoda antennas, but in my experience, when they're really short like this, I find them they seem to be breaking a little bit more than usual. So time will tell just how durable that bad boy is going to be. Because Trev and I, we have broken quite a few. When traditionally some of the other antennas, the longer pagodas are fine, but uh, this seem the really short ones. They seem to be quite fragile or prone to be prone to breaking off anyway. So time will tell how that goes. Uh, towards the other end of the FPV scene, we've got our Sony Superhad CCD2 camera right at the front, like a HS1177. That's a pretty standard camera. It's got a 2.5 lens, so I think that's a really good field of view. It's going to offer a nice field of view where it's really, it's not crammed like a 2.8 lens, but you're not going to be getting as much loss of depth perception like with the 2.1 millimeters. I think 2.5 is a great size to fly around with. But the interesting part, this is a 1200 TVO line camera. Now, uh, that really, I think, is a little bit too high. So it sounds like you're getting more quality, but that's going to introduce just a tiny bit of latency. So I usually like my cameras around 600 TVL. So this is about double that. So it's going to be interesting when we take it out and rip it around to see, is that latency going to be noticeable or have they reduced the latency enough where it's not really an issue? Towards the back, we've got here, this is our little buzzer, and I'm going to take this sticker off right here, and a programmable LED. So you can hook these up to change to whatever colors you like, which I think is pretty cool. There's nothing better when you're chasing your mates down except Except when you're chasing your mates down and they've got LEDs on. So it's really cool. You can see who you're overtaking or uh, if you're like Trevor, you can see me overtaking him all the time. Now, if we flip it to the side, you can see we've got our XT60 coming out this side. There's no actual strain relief for that. So that part's a little bit interesting. And then uh, underneath, no real, I guess, this Velcro strap is pretty dodgy. Uh, doesn't feel like it's going to be holding down it too much or whatsoever. So look, it's not terrible, but I would prefer one of the rubberized ones or even better. One of these bad boys, so probably put one of my own Velcro straps on here. I'll leave a link up here there for my Patreon supporters anyway, if you want to go check that out. But I'm going to take it out actually, we can see a little bit better. So look, it's got some pretty high tech stuff in here. I think for 150, 160 bucks, whatever it is, I think it's definitely power packed. Now in the middle, this one did come with a free sky receiver, so that's fantastic. I'm going to be hooking that up to my Tyrannus. Uh, but the interesting part is a little while ago, look, I think the prices might have changed. Go and check the description down below to the link. But for a little while, it was like 150 bucks. US, including the one with the receiver. So we're sort of getting this for free. I don't know if that was a pricing error or not, but if you're one of the guys lucky enough to get one of those, well done to you. So uh, it's nice to get your bonus free receiver if you can. Now, an interesting part here, this is the GoPro mount that comes with it. So I don't know how that's really meant to go on the top. I'm going to have to zip tie it down or something like that because I think this has been a bit of an afterthought. I don't think that's good that comes with it. It should be able to fit in here nicely. I know on the uh, the LX6, we had a, you can get a special type of 3D printed mount that fits in there. This one, there's no real way that that's gonna fit in there nicely. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modification. So look, that part, you know, interesting choice. It's nice that we get this, but I don't think it's really gonna fit on this quad very, very well. Alrighty, now what we should do, let's have a bit of a look at how this thing is designed. So like we mentioned that it's got four individual arms and I'm starting to come to the conclusion that if you do your carbon right, that can actually be a little bit stronger depending on the way the carbon goes inside. So you can see if you break an arm, it can be very, very easy to replace, but I haven't seen any spare arms yet. So it's no good having spare replaceable arms if you can't actually buy them. Now we're gonna take it apart because it looks pretty easy to do some work in the field. There's four screws underneath, one, two, three, and four, you simply undo those, and then you can pop off this top hood or the top canopy. So let's have a look at that now. Alrighty, so I've taken the top off right there. I'm gonna unplug my FPV camera actually, just so I can have a little bit more room as I'm talking to you guys, bear with me. There we go. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And you can see it's a pretty neat little package in here. I really like the way this is designed. I do have a few little qualms about camera protection, which we will talk about in the pros and cons at the end. But overall, look, I think it's designed really, really well, but Again, it's not the first company to do that. So I know the Decod Obsession and the GEP RC LX6, you know, I'll link those down below, like I mentioned. 
Those were sort of the first ones to come in here. So you do have this aluminium brace across the top. It is a really strong mix between carbon fiber and aluminium, and that's exactly what we need in our quads. We need strength and also things that are light as well, keeping the weight down. But so look, overall, it's a pretty cool design, but nothing new and nothing innovating. Now, as far as the quality goes, the solder joints on here, they look okay. They're not super shiny, but I've definitely seen worse in my times. So I'd probably give them like a six, six and a half out of 10. Nothing too shoddy. The screws in the motors, they are not locked tighter down. So that's a good little recommendation. They're not loose whatsoever, but uh, I definitely would recommend people, look, if you do get one of these, put a oh, wrong screw. If you do get one of these, definitely lock tight them up in the future because, you know, that can really ruin your day. But overall, I mean, the quality that you're getting, the quality of the components, bar the motors, because we do have to test the motors out here. But uh, things like, I think it is going to be a pretty good FPV camera. And I really like, like the Holybro F4 flight controller. I think that's fantastic. And I know that had some design input with Joshua Barbwell as well. So I think he's done a good job there. So overall, look, I think uh, what you get for the money, the quality is actually pretty decent. Now moving on, let's have a look at a few changes. Some of the things I like and some of the things I would probably change in the future. So number one, overall, I think for the money that you're going to get, this thing, you know, it's got some really good components, like I mentioned before, no question about that. And the design of the frame, even though it might be a bit of a clone, like the D-Quad Obsession, you know, that's a bit of a time and tested frame. A lot of people like that sort of design. It's really compact and it should result, you know, we'll test it out in the part to review, it should result in a really good FPV flight experience. And all that in mind for the cheap price. So I think that part's really good. There are some things I would like to change. So number one is a little bit more camera protection. I think this thing goes a long way to getting it right. But as you can see, you know, if I slide my camera, not my camera, if I slide my little pointer or my chopstick as some of you guys know it as, if I slide that across the front here, you are still touching the glass. So I really think the camera needs to recess just a tiny bit or they should ship with a smaller lens. So like a 2.8 lens or something like that would probably fit in here nicer because at the moment you're going to smash that if you run into a rock but if it was a little bit smaller you still have the chance of not smashing your camera and FPV cameras are some of the most expensive kit you can actually get. What I would really like is if it came out a little bit more and also had a bar down here because it's still going to get smashed by a flag but if it actually had something across the bottom I think that'd go a long way to stopping you know or even at the front something like have let the hang on something like this that went across the front you know I really think that goes a long way to stopping it getting smashed when you're flying around because flags are absolute killers to our cameras. Now this is actually off my talon, so totally different quad. But, you know, it would be nice if we had that little option, but I'm not complaining too much because you know, the cheap price. Uh, some other things I do think it needs to do. So towards the back here, I would love a little bit of strain relief for our battery. So I'm going to have to zip tie that down or something because in a hard crash, if you just plug that in and that gets jettisoned off, it's going to rip it straight off the board and you're going to have a very bad day, especially if it breaks your board because it's going to be a massive pain in the butt to try and change that. Or if you're not experienced and you know, you're a little bit worried about soldering and that's exactly why you bought one of these beginner quads to test it out and see if it's like for you, you know, see what it's like. You don't want to have to do those repairs so it'd be great if you can just avoid that in the first place so if you do get one of these make sure you zip tie it down or even if you are going to do it it would be nice to if this was a little bit longer because i feel like it's a little bit short to zip tie it might be a little bit too much strain now the carbon we did question that before it feels super stiff but i've never seen any carbon that looks like that so if you know please drop some comments down below it says 30 percent new improved and some other rubbish on the website but look i'm not one to believe marketing hype it, it feels stiff but time will tell in the part two review we'll thrash around and see how it goes. I love its compact little size. I think that's fantastic. One part I definitely, like I mentioned, I would be changing this as well. So the GoPro protector on the top or the GoPro holder, that's rubbish. That's really not going to work. That's like an afterthought. Someone said, wait, we need a GoPro protector. Let's put that in there. That's not going to fit very well. So I wish they could change that as well. And then it's just the motors. So uh, I can't really comment on these motors. They don't have any branding on them whatsoever. Fury B has been hit and miss, like I mentioned. So it's just going to see what's it like in the part two review. So make sure you're sticking around for that because uh, uh, I want to see how this goes. And if these motors are performance packed, I think people are definitely on to a winner. Alrighty, so there it is. Uh, there's my part one review of the Fury B X215. And I think the big question that a lot of people are going to be wanting to know, is this a cheap drone that looks like it's going to be performance packed? Absolutely. Is it going to be better than something like the B Fight? If you haven't seen the B Fight, I'll leave a review up here. I think that one was about $150. And it's very much for muchness, you know, it's, I'm going to have to wait and see how this thing goes out in the field, but uh, it's got some serious components on here. So I think this thing is going to absolutely rip and uh, I really like the design of it. Look, it's not perfect. I would like a little bit better camera protection. I have no idea how you meant to mount a GoPro and the FPV antenna, although the Pagodas are a fantastic antenna. I do think that's going to be a little bit, a little bit breakable. 
and uh, you know this carbon it's it feel it does feel really stiff definitely stiffer than something like the F200 the awesome F200 but uh, you know I've never seen a carbon frame that's finished like that so time will tell how it holds up but definitely subscribe for more FPV related content make sure you come back every Monday Wednesday Friday because that's when I release videos and soon we're gonna be doing the part two review of, review of this where we take it out to the field I'll show you guys some HD footage we'll hand it over to Grumpy Trev he can rip it around and then most importantly we'll hit it we'll get crash test Cal there and we'll hit it with speed gun Sally anyway hope you guys enjoyed that uh, and as always happy flying also to drop some comments down below I mean do you think this thing is gonna be worth it what do you think the performance is like and for the price like 160 bucks or whatever Whatever it is you know do you think that that's a good buy would you recommend that to somebody getting in the hobby or would you say you're better off saving up and getting one of those three four even five hundred dollar drones even if it's your first time anyway let me know happy flying alrighty so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos and I'm also going to leave a little link here to my patreon page because I've got some fantastic patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well so if you want to join the UAV futures family there's things like bonus velcro straps little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out Anyway, happy flying.